Hey guys, welcome to Daddy's Money Garage. Tonight, I am at Uncle Tony's garage doing a couple little things with the jet, just replacing some seals on the carburetor and stuff. John was here earlier. He cleaned the floor so we can rhino line it this weekend. But that's not the focus of today's video. Uh, today, I, well, not today, I guess tonight, I have desecrated the shop because I drove this thing inside. I am almost 100% sure this is the newest car that's ever been driven in here and it's a Ford product so it's just leeching bad juju into all these Mopars and I guess motorcycles since you know they're all parked here but the focus of today's video is to follow up on my Mercury video that I made a couple weeks ago I want to give you a couple tips and tricks on how to uh, you know live with one of these cars and keep it you know modernized like I have, maybe make some easy modifications that don't cost a lot of money if you have one of these. And I'm gonna start that off with uh, the factory headlights, okay? So, how do I put this? From the factory, these headlights are so terrible that I am willing to put money on a blind man riding a horse backwards through a minefield perfectly before I would put money on the factory headlights lighting up a deer in the middle of the road at night. So if you have one of these cars, you, you probably know that the headlights are garbage and the way to fix this is to retrofit them with HIDs. But put them in projectors so that you don't blind everybody. These are available from the retrofit source. They're made by Acme. They're, they're not that expensive. And they're, uh, but they're a bit of a process to change, uh, to actually do the conversion. John's going to make a video about how to do this conversion. And if you own one of these cars, or if you're interested in seeing them be done, subscribe. Because it's going to come. He's going to do it. He's got all the stuff to do it. And it's just a matter of making the video, I guess. Anyway, moving on from that. Headlights are the big thing to change. Um... If you're wanting to make modifications and you don't want to spend a ton of money, uh, I have good news for you. Ford built these cars as, well, fleet cars. And they made a lot of different options for these cars. That being said, they didn't make different wiring harnesses for every single car based on options. They made one big wiring harness that had all of the wiring for every option. And then they just changed little, you know, plugins to that harness that ran to that optional equipment. And okay, let me explain this how the best I can. So <clears throat> these cornering lights, right? These were optional equipment on Crown Vicks. Uh, they, I don't think they were standard on Mercury's, but either way, if you go to a junkyard and you find something like these cornering lights, and you want them grab the harness that plugs into these lights as well because the main harness that that harness from the lights plugs into already has the wiring there to make these work so as long as you have that harness that connects from the main one to the light they'll work just fine easy modification uh, same with the steering wheel okay so if you have like automatic temperature control like this car has um <coughs> Sometimes you would get an optional wheel that would have the controls for it. This car did not. This car uh, did not have this wheel. I This actually came out of an Ultimate Edition, which is one trim level higher. However, the wiring for these buttons to work for the radio and the temperature control is already inside of the steering column. So all you got to do is change the wheel and plug it in and these will work. The only difference here is that if you have changed the radio, like I have, these bu these volume buttons will not work. You have to get a signal converter to make them work, but they do work. I, I actually did that because I wanted them to work. Uh, speaking of radios, if you're going to make a modification, um, you may have done some research and a lot of people will say that it just, you know, it can't be done. Uh, I know when I was looking at changing radios, a lot of people said that just, you know, just don't do it. And yes, it is very difficult, but obviously it's doable. They make DIN kits for it. So 
but the problem is is that the basket that the radios mount into are very shallow and they can make contact with the defroster vent so no matter what you do unless you put a very thin like alpine media deck in you're gonna have to cut away at that um defroster vent for this big kenwood radio that is the same size all the way back from like so this size here it's the same size all the way back the entire basket had to be removed so if you're going to put in one of these you have to find a way to support the radio next thing oh okay oh i did want to say something about this the puddle lights so in the mercury video that i made a couple weeks ago people were asking about you know where i got these puddle lights these are custom made they were never an option i if i still had the card i would tell you it's been so long since i had like since i had them made that i don't remember exactly who made them but i'll see if i can find it and, uh, and i'll post it in the community tab one thing too okay so most of these cars are going to be white and if you know anything about ford white paint it peels if you just look at it wrong. And I, there's prime examples of it, like right here. Uh, wait, how... How is that... Is that rust? This is galvanized metal. How is that... Well, anyway, that's a good example of it. Uh, but specifically, they rust back... Or not rust. They flake right here in the rain gutter area. And... There's almost no way to really prevent this from happening, but you can stall it. Uh, this is, you know, that spot up there at the front, and this right here is where it is the worst, except for this right here. <laughs> I had a big chunk of paint just come off, and I got a little bit uh, ambitious about fixing it because I, that's like five layers of paint. And it's a different, slightly different color. Uh, the can said performance white, but obviously it's not. A anyway, to keep performance white paint from flaking off like no tomorrow, um, clear coat conditioner, clear coat conditioner. It will, it will make this paint last a little bit longer. This car has never been repainted. It's you know it's in remarkably good shape for. Most examples I see, because a lot of white Grand Marquis, Panthers, anything, they, they, they're they just flaking off. But the UV protection will keep the the paint, the clear coat sealed to the paint. It'll, it won't let it pull away as much, and that's what causes it to flake off. The clear coat gets burned away, and then it, the paint is able to just flake off. So, wash your car a lot, and use clear coat conditioner. I just take mine through a service. I have subscription, because I'm lazy. One other thing of, uh, of noteworthiness is they, okay, so the factory didn't get everything right. If you park these cars on, and it might be just specific to this generation, if you park these on an incline where the driver's side is sitting a little lower than the passenger side, and it rains, uh, water will pull up right here. And it will run straight down into the number eight ignition coil. And, and it can't go anywhere. It, it just sits there. And it will pull up and run down the spark plug tube. And the next time you go to fire up your engine, you will very likely short it out. I have run through like three of them. So just try to park it level or park it inside or something. I mean, I know that that's like a lot to to really have to do, but yeah, I mean, if you don't want to change out ignition coils all the time, just do that. Also, one other thing, transmissions on these cars, they, uh, unless you have had them routinely serviced, don't go flushing it. Uh, this is uh, probably rule of thumb for most automatic transmissions, th that you should not flush them unless you have you know, service re service records that you've done yourself. But these in particular, these will last a long time to about maybe 200,000 miles, between 175, 200,000 miles. But if you flush them and they haven't been flushed beforehand, 
they that significantly reduces the um, the life of the transmission. If you if you're picking one of these up and you don't know the service history, just drop the pan, replace whatever is in the pan and put a new filter on it and save yourself the headache. Anyway, that's kind of a quick video on the Panther platform. John and I are really passionate about these cars and I hope it's at least interesting to those of you that, that you know, are, are not into these cars because there's a huge community around them and it, it's just, it's interesting to us. So, so, so anyway, um, it's late. I'm tired. I'm going to go home, like, and subscribe. If you want to see more of this, if you want to see more of anything else we do, and I will catch you in the next one.